This is uh, cheap passive Ethernet taps. Uh, and I'm, I'm presenting blind, so I'm just going to follow the slides. Uh, basically, I wanted a way to do a passive tap cheaply. I saw things like, you know, the Ninja Throwing Star, and I wanted it to be cheap. I'm a cheapskate. So uh, I kind of put a price around 10 bucks. I'm like, if I have 10 bucks in parts, I'm fine with that anymore. I don't want to spend. Uh, I want to buy directional. Uh, my main use case was troubleshooting printers that are trying to scan to email and not scanning to email. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that I could capture traffic both ways to see if it's rejecting the creds or if it's using wrong creds or, you know, what exactly is going on. Uh, I didn't want to do uh, the, the female jack terminations. I hate punching things down. Uh, I, I much prefer to crimp them. So there wasn't a whole lot that I found that could do that. And then I found this uh, cheap Chinese website that has what they call an Ethernet splitter. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, splitters don't work as splitters because that's not how Ethernet phone thing. Sure. Um, and they have one-to-one-to-one -one -one wiring. So what will happen is you plug in two devices to the splitter and it works just fine. You plug in a third device and none of them work at all. Uh, so what I was looking for, one-star reviews. That means it works for my purpose. <laughs> uh, if you want to make one of these, uh, find a one-star review Ethernet splitter and you're probably in good shape. Uh, this is a, a picture of the one that I have. I have I have it here in the box if anyone wants to see it afterwards. Um, yeah, it's it's one to one to one. Pin one goes to pin one. Pin two goes to pin two, uh, etc. No crossover or anything. You're trying to, you know, disable some so that it can actually split. Uh, here is the the basic pin out of Ethernet. Uh, the sort of theory behind it is that you need to have it be hundred meg because these uh, brown and blue uh, wires in there. They are designed for bidirectional communication when you're doing a gigabit, uh, whereas the, the brown and, or sorry, the green and orange are defined more for either transmit or receive. Granted, that can vary a little bit with uh, auto detect and all that, but uh, really you don't want the blue or the green because you don't want any traffic that you're not capturing. Uh, at least I don't. So basically, we need to make sure it's 100 meg. We have to screw with the blue and brown wires. Um, some people do that certain ways, like uh, capacitors. Hack 5, their land tap throwing star, it uses a, a certain value of capacitor that matches, I believe, the impedance of the line. Uh, I'm pretty sure you could also do it with a terminating resistor. If you know anything about transmission lines and how the impedance works between them, uh, you, you can figure that out. And if you don't, Google for it, because I'm not the one to tell you about it. Um, here's the Hack 5 solution. They put a capacitor on it. Here's my solution. I twist the wires together and it can't do anything. Um, I initially tried just twisting all four together and was like, you know, screw it. They'll all connect. And the devices were like, no, we're, we're not talking to each other like that. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I'll do them individually then. Um, if you see something like this on your network, it's probably sketchy. Uh, <laughs> so the, the pins uh, three and four, five, six, three and six are the receive pins. Uh, so if you wire it like this, so that from both directions, so the way, the way that I have it is there's one end of the cable, it's a standard Ethernet jack for the, the 568B standard. Um, and on the other end, I have the two twisted wires like you saw, and then the green goes to pins three and six, and the orange goes to pins three and six, and those go into two USB to Ethernet adapters, because my laptop doesn't have any Ethernet ports. Um, and then I'm going to attempt to demo it. So Brandon, if you can come up here and try and log into that thing again. Uh, basically what you do is you take, you take the adapter and first you plug in the two devices. So if they're like, you know, what's going on? Why am I, you know, they don't, they don't see much of a connection loss except for when you plug them in here. And then uh, here, get it set up, but don't actually hit enter yet. And then if I plug in my fancy schmancy sketchy cable, Oh. Then it should. Let's see if I can pull Wireshark over there. Where is my mouse? Yeah, here we are. So I want to pull Wireshark over here. And I want to make sure I'm capturing on two and, oh, four is not showing up. Just a second. Let me unplug and replug. You want to do, you want to have 
Wireshark be happy with you? That's the key to this here. If nothing else, I'll show you traffic going one direction. Yeah, so I'm not sure what exactly is going on with my setup right now, but I'm only getting uh, Ethernet from one of one of my, well, I'm seeing two of them. Free, then switch the cables. Yeah, I don't know if it's the one we want, uh, but we'll see. So I'm going to try and capture on those two devices and hit capture. And then Brandon's going to try and log into a cheap Chinese switch that... Uh, uh, oh, 401 unauthorized. Look at that. He tried to log in and it didn't work. Let's see if we can see what he did here. Authentication, uh, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, Would it have been before it? I think we need to switch them. Yep. Let's try that. Okay. So we're receiving on the one that we want to... Receiving the wrong direction here. This will capture bi-directionally if you set up Wireshark properly, which I did not do apparently. So we scroll back down. Which one of these you think it is? No, I haven't pushed in here yet. Oh, you haven't pushed in here. All right. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Nothing, man. What do you do? Super. The, the lights aren't on. Uh, not on either of them. I made it mad. Oh, this guy's not. It's probably the unpowered USB hub that, you, that you're using. Or it could be to just set it up. <laughs> yeah, so a um, couple issues with the setup. One, apparently some computers don't like seeing two USB Ethernet devices. Uh, mine were when I asked the purpose I could use it for. Uh, but as you know, it can be a bit finicky. Uh, two is that if you make the cable too long, you'll end up with reflections. And uh, who, who here knows about transmission lines? Couple of people, okay. Basically, if you end up with a reflection or a transmission line, when it hits the end of the cable and there's nothing there or there's something there that it's not expecting, like when you take stuff out of the middle of the cable like I did, then it'll, it'll bounce off the end of the cable and shoot back the other way and can cause interference with trying to send or receive data. And it'll be like, uh, I might get a lot of reasons. Uh, but yeah, I if I if I get it uh, working again, I will post screenshots up on Slack showing uh, what it's supposed to look like. And if not, well, you saw a failed demo. Congrats. <laughs> awesome. Thanks.